Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, volcanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand in watercolor, thin and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. Well, here we are for another episode, episode 28, and this is December the 30th, the last episode for the year 2019. This is Clyde J. Kale, and you are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast. I'm here with my friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Brownsland. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everyone. Hey, Clyde. Hello, Diane. It's good to be here. Um, hello, everybody. All right. Okay, since this is the last episode for 2019, maybe it's a good time to uh, talk a little bit about uh, maybe organizing, organizing our art career, organizing our studio, uh, maybe uh, set some goals and uh, think about uh, what are we going to uh, try to accomplish for 2020. Some of the recommended videos was on the, with that theme. Um, there was one vi- video that I enjoyed. Uh, a uh, I didn't catch her name, but an artist. Uh, she uh, provided a video of ten tips or ten hacks for artists. I really oh, enjoyed cute. that. Did you Did you two enjoy that? Yeah, I did. You know, some of them really you need, the one one hack that she presented that I just never thought of is how to organize your brushes. And she described, you know, those those green styrofoam that that uh, yeah, the florist stuff. Florists usually use those. So you you put yeah. the, you put those in a tub, and you can sit your brushes up and organize your brushes by size or style or whatever. You know, and I thought that's fantastic because I got all my brushes sitting in a cup, and I usually got to pick out which ones I think I'm going to use, and then I find that I want to get another one. And I got to get up. If I had them in that little styrofoam thing, the way she had that set up. That would be perfect. So that was a, that was a good good hack. Um, what's one of some of the other hacks that she mentioned? Do you remember? Constance or Diane? <laughs> um, she talked about using the cellophane or something on the paint caps. Yeah, that, that was a pretty good tip. Yeah. The key Putting that on before you put your cap on, so it wouldn't stick. Yeah, because sometimes yeah, you- make your cap dirty. <clears throat> Yeah, get your cap all dirty, or or it would actually stick, stick to, and then you end up twisting, and twisting the the tube. That's why I have pliers. <laughs> I use a set of, a pair of pliers to take the tops off when they're stuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do too. <laughs> also, you can use if it's really stuck, like you can't get it with the pliers or something. You can also you can also heat it up a little bit with a lighter, and that sometimes will help warm it up and when it I don't know what it does to the paint but it kind of loosens it up that way too if you're really 
Hey, the, e- the easiest point is put that little piece of styrofoam, uh, silvain yeah. on there, a little piece of plastic on that. That that's a, that was. Grand wrap. Johnson, can you think of any that uh, you liked? Hmm. <laughs> well, I know one thing I do. Like I've I've got watercolor and acrylic and oil paints, and I have each of my each of those in a separate container, the tubes. And then I, inside the container, I usually have um, the tube that I'm using, and especially the colors that I use a lot of, I'll have an extra tube. Uh-oh. But I, inside the lid, I, I have a um, post-it note. And when I use up a tube, I'll write on there what the color it is so that I know what I need to order without having to go through all of them and figure it out. Yeah, that's a so good one. That's, that's, that's handy one. to do that. Yeah, I do the same thing. I keep my... <laughs> my acrylics and my watercolors in separate separate containers not so organized though they're just all kind of thrown in there but before i uh start whatever uh project i'm going to start on i don't i don't have to do it so much with the watercolors because i use a uh, a plastic palette a portable palette and what's nice with watercolors is is you know you squirt you squirt a little dab especially the yeah. <laughs> quality watercolors and it just lasts forever and ever and ever and ever. So even if it dries, you know, and I can, the, the, the plastic pellet, I, it's, I can close it, you know, so that will, you know, work, works fantastic. But with the um, acrylics, uh, I'll uh, in advance kind of pick out the tubes, you know, the colors I think I'm going to use, I'll lay those off side. So I don't have to constantly be digging through because I, they're all inter dumped in a big box and they're just you know not organized by colors or whatever they're yeah she had that other I've got, a, using I've got one of those chrome shelves and i have a little <laughs> bin for each color and i throw all the yellows in one and all the blacks and whites in one and then you know just the different colors in each in both of you i'm in both far more organized i don't know if i have the paper as <laughs> that much yeah <laughs> I'm really organized as far as my materials, my art materials. Mm-hmm. On the, the computer is another story. <laughs> my files on the computer are like no, that's work, right. but <laughs> now I'm the reverse. I am well organized on the computers. I got specific <laughs> files for, for for different things, and so I can find it right away. I've got all my all my images. You know the art. I start out that way, but. <laughs> It doesn't always end up that way. I always have, I have a to go my desktop and... screen is always full of photographs and stuff that I've taken <laughs> because I haven't put them in their proper files that live on the desktop because I have yeah. files that live on the desktop so I can access access them easy, you know. But yeah. Another tip she had was using the um, Tupperware container to put the paint in when you're done with it, so it keeps it from drying out. I'm not sure if that would work with the oil paint or not. I'll have to try that, but <laughs> it does work pretty good if, you, as long as you don't wait a long time to go back and use them. I just cleaned a palette off that I had in one of those. They ha- the, there's a company that makes those plastic containers that those disposable easels, uh, disposable disposable palettes will fit in. You know, when you tear off a sheet and just uh-huh. chunk it, but it fits and it seals all the way around. So. I have I have one for my acrylic paint when I do it, but I, have, I don't usually use it for, I haven't used it for my oil paints. I don't know why. I just never, it has a sponge in there so the um, acrylic paint stays good. Moist. Huh. Yeah. yeah. And that works pretty of, well. I used but to I've never to, used that for the oil paints. Yeah. yeah. My, I'll try that sometime. Acrylic's dry pretty I'll tell you what I found that works really good with uh, oil paints, and that is to take a sheet of aluminum foil and put it down over and wrap the palette in aluminum foil and stick it in the refrigerator when you're not painting. Now, I know this seems weird, but there was a class that I went to a long time ago when we were all oil painters and everybody wrapped their palettes in aluminum foil and there was a refrigerator there just for that purpose, other than just coffee <laughs> stuff. And everybody stuck their palettes in the refrigerator and we, kept, you know, cause we used to go back and forth once a week to the class. Okay. Uh, yeah, I used to do um, the uh, plastic wrap and do the same thing. But I did. I got impatient because when you get it out, you have to kind of wait for it to get back to room temperature. <laughs> 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 I 
I don't like to do that. It wastes too much time. But I don't remember to get it out ahead of time, so it's. Well, when I start uh, this year, you know, I'm going. I'm going to uh, start doing oil painting. You know, now that uh, with Diane's recommendation of uh, using the <clears throat> walnut oil, you know, and everything, so I don't don't intoxicate myself. And uh, I'll be uh, I'll be trying those different things because these oil paints are expensive. So I certainly don't. They are. I don't want to use it. Uh, you know, you take full advantage. I don't want to waste. You know, <laughs> as we're man, the reds are the most expensive. Red, yellow, orange. Yeah, the cads. I don't yeah. know why. You know, is it is it's it because they are? Is it the pig <laughs> expensive pigments or something or? But, they must be. Yeah, I've uh, I've looked at I've got a starter set, but then I've you know I'm going to expand it, and I've looked at the to see what the you know the individual tubes, and yeah, some of them as high as twenty dollars. You know. Mm-hmm. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> Some of them are higher than that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so anyhow, we'll see. And usually, the cads are what are the most uh, some of the most expensive. Then there's yeah. a, like a rose matter deep. That one's always expensive, unless it, you know it's. I think that's the uh, one. It's I, like, for I like my portraits. My because these are M Graham the these paints that I'm mm-hmm. using. And I use the M. Graham watercolors, and oh, I love that rose matter color. God, that rose <laughs> deep, and the that that, it's just, that is a wonderful color. It just it it's good for all kinds of things, you know. Yeah, it blends really nicely. It makes nice, especially skin tones. At least a water, at least a watercolor, fun. you know, version. So I'm sure that uh, the same company. I'm sure they use the same pigment when they when they make the uh, you know the water oil you know paint. Okay. And uh, speaking of uh, organization and everything, and also, you know, the new year, everybody, you know, makes New Year's resolutions, and then a week later, they promptly forget them, yeah, (laughs) especially with exercise and weight loss and whatever else, but uh, we're going to let our listeners know, we're going to pick, we have several, and we'll be talking about these later on, but... um, Right now, just one big one for the month of January. And then in a one of our episodes near the end of the month, we'll check back and see if we've achieved it. So, Diane or Constance, who wants to go first? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to work on my MailChimp um, account. I have to get some more emails and stuff in there and set up and put it onto an um, a automated thing so they'll come out regularly because that's that's not something i'm very good at is sending out emails regularly so that's something i gotta work on for the whole year actually but <laughs> i'm gonna start this coming month that's gonna be your big okay yeah constance what about you what's your big thing for the month of january uh for the month of january uh i signed up for fasso but so i want to go ahead and get that all fleshed out and set up so all right, so That's the main one. your new website, you have that all all set up. You have it all set up by the end of the month, right? Not all set up, but <laughs> very well set up, hopefully. More than one po- more than one painting up there for sure. That's well, pretty much all I have right now. <laughs> checking back with you. And you, you know, also, once you get it get it set up with your address and everything, you can uh, you know, mm-hmm. be sure to uh, publicize the address for you, let the listeners know so they can go and check it out. Okay, my big go is very similar to uh, Diane's. I've got to get back with my mailing list, get it updated, and get back to posting on a regular basis and with my blog postings. I was doing pretty good with my blog about once a week, but I've been about three weeks now, I think, since I posted something. So I've got to get back into that. So that's my big thing for uh, for January, too, is uh, the uh, working with the uh, mailing list and uh, – Doing some more po- blog postings. All right. Um, what did you guys think about uh, Sergio Gomez's uh, video about uh, and uh, organizing organizing your day? That's some interesting <laughs> tips. I mean, a lot of stuff, you know, I've already kind of do, and he emphasized what we've talked about, that you've got to uh, know yourself. You've got to uh, understand your uh, your own method of, of you know what you're good at and not good at and then organize around that what would you think about that 
it's it's a good idea to try to do that but <clears throat> it's, it's hard to um follow through on it a lot of times because things you know life happens things come up and <laughs> throw yeah. you off course and before you know it an hour or two has gone by and you've lost time but um you had a very structured uh you know setup i was i was surprised how of course as he emphasized uh he uh you've got to know yourself yeah you gotta know what your you know w- what time of the day you're best at doing what you know and uh, kind of organize your uh your activities around that you know so i think a lot of uh, self-reflection and uh, a lot of uh thinking about uh your uh, y- your life and uh uh you know where your strengths and your uh weaknesses are you know and kind of organize your uh your daily activities, you know, your art activities and everything. Constance, you got anything you want to add anything to that or? Yeah, he's, he's right. You do have to know yourself and what you, you know, and then just, you know, if you get distracted, just come back to it, you know, but life does happen (laughs) and gets in the way a lot of times. So you just have to just go back to yeah it. i mean he, yeah he talked about you know he works better on his paintings in the evening and he does his email and that kind of stuff in the morning after you know after he has his breakfast and you know he's he seems like he's pretty structured as far as that goes but yeah um, he had a really and, and it, I, <laughs> one thing that he did emphasize is that of course you know he uh, he he he's a working artist he runs a gallery and he also teaches and you know he sets aside specific uh time for you know talking with his dealing with his uh, students that takes his classes and then and dealing with business people you know and that's a because he doesn't because when he's in the middle of like painting or doing something else he doesn't want to be interrupted with those things and i think that's what happens to all of us you know we yeah. we, we kind of we, it's easy to get distracted, you know. In fact, before we started the recording, we were talking about on YouTube. You know, YouTube can be a rabbit hole. If you have that autoplay set, oh my God, you're in trouble because one video after another, and then and then something. Oh, that looks interesting. And then you see that you watch that, and it, that's that's the first thing I disabled on all my <laughs> devices was autoplay, so that I only watch a specified. You know, amount of videos, and then that's it. <laughs> there was somebody I was listening to, and she, yeah, go ahead. Um, she she uses songs like she usually has, you know, the radio playing or um, you know songs playing on her her, her uh, stereo or something, whatever. And um, <clears throat> she'll use a song and say, "Okay, this song." She knows, you know, approximately how long the songs are. I'm just going to do my emails while that song's on and as soon as the song ends she turns it off and does something else whatever the next thing is on her list i thought that was an interesting way of doing it it's kind of like having a timer but not <laughs> not having an actual timer set yeah maybe with the I, i'd use the timer a lot when i'm painting to remind myself to take photos as i'm like progress shots because a lot of times i'll get in my zone and i'll forget all about it <laughs> before i know what the painting's done i don't have any pictures yeah Exactly. Yes, I, 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 I'm the same way. I'll, uh, I don't use a, any kind of a timer, but I know what you mean. You get, you get zoned and you get so engrossed in, you know, <clears throat> accomplishing. And especially if you're having some difficulty, if it's not coming out the way you, you're in your mind, you vision it, you can't seem to get your fingers to cooperate. Then you just keep at it and you keep at it until you, you get it right, and then five hours has gone by, and it's just, oh my god, what? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, like in my case, I, I most of my art is done real early in the morning. I seem to be at my most creative period, like between two and five in the morning. I don't know why. That I've tried to to work on stuff during the day, and I just, I, I it doesn't come out. It I have to do it do it early. Yeah, you know, early in the morning. There was a uh, a picture one time that was posted on Facebook, and it was a uh, office building, and it had a, a single light on, and the <laughs> caption read, "That's an artist that lives there." 
I think that's so true because I find out I've talked to other artists. I'm not the only one. <laughs> I'm not unique in that respect. You know, a lot of artists work on their, uh, on, on their uh, creativity you know, early in the morning. That seems like when the, when the urge uh, hits, hits us. Yeah. I'm not a morning person. So mine is staying up all <laughs> me night. Either. <laughs> I do. I might try to make me get up early. It's just like, I just can't do it. I don't know why, but I can't. <laughs> but I can stay up all night. <laughs> yeah, I'm a night owl too. But I don't. I don't normally create at night. I usually. I like creating in the daylight. I guess. I like having the the natural light to work with. Yeah. <clears throat> well, yeah, you're a plain. That's typical. That's a plain name air painter. You know. And yeah. That's uh, that's that's one of the you know few. Uh, like there you know maybe eventually i'll get to it but I'm, I'm still, <laughs> we're gonna get you outside yet <laughs> i'm still more of a studio painter you know <laughs> hiding away yep, that's, yep. Uh, and it's a little squirrel <laughs> squirrel hole <laughs> hiding away <laughs> that's me <laughs> maybe that'd be i'll put that on my goal for 2020 to do a plain air painting one time you know all right so I'll, I'll, I'll i'll take your urging and I'll get set up, and I'll go out there, and then I'll get bit by a snake, or bird, <laughs> or birds will crap. No, that's not very good. You don't have a negative attitude. Or, you have to start with a positive attitude. It's bad to have that kind of attitude to start with. These will attack me, you know, <laughs> and I'll come back all, you know, all bruised, these <laughs> beast tongues all over, and I'll say, you see, Diane and no. Kyle, this is your fault. You see? That's part of the fun of you it. Gotta <laughs> use, you have to take a can off with you so that the bugs won't bother you. <laughs> they make little wristbands that you can wear for bugs and i have a shirt that i can i wear that that's just it's got bug stuff on it apparently and they leave me alone so i just put that shirt on and oh see you think that no they leave you alone because you're just so ornery they just don't want <laughs> you no i'll we tell you no, what we, we if no i go outside <laughs> and the mosquitoes from 20 miles away will go She's outside. Let's go get her <laughs> because mosquitoes <laughs> love me. <laughs> I'll tell you, they'll pass everybody else up and come after me. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, since this is the last episode, I uh, I want to wish you to a very uh, happy new year, and uh, I hope you had a had a uh, good Christmas. You know, I had a yeah. Right before here, yeah, what kind? Did we get any Christmas gifts? Cause I know you did. Tell us what you got. I got a 60 piece set of Terry Ludwig's pastels, the in, intense darks. I yeah. needed that so badly, but that's what I got for Christmas. And that was really, really cool present. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it out, it out did all the, you know, other things that I got. <laughs> okay. Diane, did you get any, any uh, artistic Christmas gifts or? Um, I don't think so. <laughs> Nobody usually buys anything for me because I like specific things. They know it, they they don't know what to buy, so I don't usually get any did you get art stuff. Did you get yourself anything for for Christmas? A self gift, you know? That's always good too. Cause... Yeah, well, I, I bought some stuff before Christmas <laughs> during Black Friday. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's like you know, I got all excited. I got my you know my first oil paint set. You know that that was a Black Friday, but for me, I count that as a Christmas present too. You know. That, yeah. Yeah. Man. I got I got some nice um, linen um, linen uh, canvases. All right, so, good. Yeah, that was kind of a treat because I don't usually work on linen. It's, it's so expensive, but it good. is. They had a good sale going on, so <laughs> I got well, some. Well, that's like you know. I think I think we we discussed. I, I think I I told everybody you know, but when I got my uh, you know the uh, that starter set of uh, M Graham, you know. Mm -hmm. oil paints you know you know i'm uh god i'm itching to get into that but i guess you haven't gotten into them yet no i've i've got <gasps> well i i've got to set up a place where i can uh, put the paintings to dry because you know cause they said uh it takes a while for the dry so i don't want to uh well you could go ahead and put the back thing the wire and hooks on the back and that way you can hang it while yep. it's drying. I just got to, in this, I got to put a clean out of space in the apartment, move some boxes around and uh, 
so I can have a, you know, a, a spot. eBay. <laughs> setting them up, you know, setting them up so they can, so they can dry. Cause, uh, I guess it takes a while. Everything I read about, you know, water and oil does take, depending on how much water and oil and oil you use and how thick your paint is, it could take a while to dry. Yeah. Unlike, mm -hmm. unlike acrylics, I'm used to things in watercolors, things dry. Instant gratification. Up. Yeah. <laughs> Instant gratification. That's it. You know? <laughs> but yeah, I, that's, yeah, it won't be long. I'll be digging into them. I can't. I keep looking at them every day and they're looking up. They're, they're, <laughs> they're calling, calling to you. Use me. Use me. I just think, oh, we're going to use this, you know, come on. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you too for joining me this last year. Now we're going on what? Three years now, you know, of, of uh, <laughs> meeting like this and, uh, you know, online and you two are some, I love it. <laughs> you're, my, you're my best artist friends. You really are. You're, you, you keep <laughs> Y'all are mine too. Yeah. You keep me going. And I'm, I'm hope that, uh, that you're getting something out of our, you know, our weekly meetings and, uh, can, uh, I want to, uh, wish you, uh, a very prosperous, uh, 2020 and our listeners. I also want to wish you folks a prosperous 2020 and, uh, we will uh, wrap up this episode. I'll let Diane and Constance, you want to, any good tidings, wishes? Well, happy new year, everybody. Clyde and Diane, we're going to have a good year this year. <laughs> yeah. Happy new year, everyone. <laughs> yep. Happy new year, everybody. You've been listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 28 for December the 30th. This is Clyde J. Kale with Diane and Constance. And uh, good night, Diane. Good night, Constance. Good, good night, Clive. Good night, Constance. Good night, good everyone. Bye-bye, <laughs> folks. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Brosnan and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www dianehuntstudio.com Constance Bronzan at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash c-b-r-o-s-n-a-n-s Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com If you'd like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. That's cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons License 2019. Thank you for listening.